child. Powerful. Priceless. An influencer. The core of nature. The one with the deliberate gate of the can-do spirit. Mwada. The girl child. Olune Dozioku, the advocate, the mediator. You see, and you know, when I was going to do my speech and talk, a lot of people said, ah, why don't you talk about communications, the power of self branding, self development? And I said, look around you, look around the world. Look at Imo states. Look at our daughters. There has been one consistent conversation in research that has continued to be the stereotype. And that's that somehow culture, tradition limits the girl child. That what we have been raised to think is that the girl is seen and not heard. See. Right from history, right from history, we, are there any others in the house, first of all? The ladies, thank you. We have been given the power and the mastery to become. And I say that because historically, when you look at the role of Mwadas, the Mwadas, they are the curators, the conubators, the ones who bring together the one who influenced, the one who advised. And you would also, when you ask, why do people say umunne? It could be, why do they say one norma? You know, and that is because right from history, our forefathers, our fathers have thought about the girl child and eulogized her. Tradition had made her become the frontliner. And over the years, you know, they talk about the aggression of, you know, feminism, we can take it, but you have always been led to take it. We have always been created to be at the forefront. So the stereotypes that come sometimes is only trying to remind you, not tell you what you are already in the sphere. Mwada, somebody will say Mwada. The girl child, the reawakening of the voice. It is the girl child who births. She is the one who brings together. She is the one who deliberates. Let me tell you something. Half of the decisions that are brought to fore, whether in governance so, in politics so, even in economics, are discussed with women. The fathers discuss with the mothers. I cannot remember. When my dad took a decision without saying, I'll let your mother know. Or he would say, I will talk to your mother first. Let us agree. Or I stylishly go to my father because I'm my father's daughter. And I'm the apple of my dad's eye. Hello. And I'm thinking, I tell my dad, this is the plan I have that I know that, you know, with you I can get this. So can I just go ahead and do it? And he'll look at me like, hmm. Okay, no problem, but just I'll get back to you on it. Not knowing that getting back to me on it is to get permission from his wife. And so my mother will see me and say, Hi, I heard what you told your father. Come and discuss with me first. I'm like, Oh my God. And so I'm thinking, Why do we even begin to believe that we need to ask to be given the power? When I'll be you. Albinicio, we were designed in power. Albinicio, we were designed as frontliners. And I can tell you that, I can tell you that even in the economy, even in the system, one thing I have realized is that the gender roles between the men and women are always taught from the home. And I think it's something that we should begin to redefine in school. If you have a male and a female daughter, if you have a, a female daughter and a son, there shouldn't be any need for you to say only the boys can play football and the girls can cook. 
raise a home, become an advocate in your home where you say, just as the girls are good enough to cook, the boys can also want to cook, and that should be okay. And just as the boys want to play football, the girls should also want to play football, and that should be okay. And I believe that when we begin to do that, we would understand that the term equality is only a novelty. Because when it becomes normalized, that growing up in an environment, what your girl can do, your boy can do, you understand that it is a set norm and not a demand. Again, I want to say something. You know, people used to say, ah, women in politics. We need to have more women in politics. We need to have women master the act of politics. But I can tell you that Margaret Echo was not told to run for election. She became, and she's one of the first parliamentarians in time. I can also tell you that the first female king, long time ago in 1972, Agebi Uhebi was a king in an Enugu community as far back as 1972, a local village girl. And so I am asking the question, then how does tradition contradict us? How does culture reinvent the will when we should be the one doing the reawakening? Again, I bring us back, I don't know if you remember these four women. Who remembers the almighty Abarayot? When taxation was at its peak, and both men, no, no disrespect to my male folks, were there and the female, and taxation was stiff, and the communities were, were, were dying in silence, four women came out and said, you know what? We are tired of this taxation. How much do we even make that we are paying these taxes? And before you know it, the art of lobbying became. And these women began to speak to the women in the community. And the, and the mother of all riots, the Abba riots, what was, that was what changed the dynamics of taxation, even the pre- and post-colonial era. And so when you hear the Abba women's riots, NSAS did not start today, women started it. And you talk about the economics and the finance. They say, give a woman, make a woman a manager. She manages it properly. Now, Nigeria was indebted to the tune of $30 billion under the Paris front. And before that, there were other ministers, not to discredit the gender, but I'm looking at the capacity of the gender. And that is why $30 billion, I don't know if they give you $1 billion, it's a lot of money. It can change life. Talk more of a country that is indebted to that tune. Now, you took one woman, Ngozi Okonjo Iwala, when she became the Minister for Finance. Now, when she wanted to do that conversation, I remember they said, or Bashan just told her that it's impossible, that how could this be? And she said, no, that they were not speaking the right language. She not only canceled the $30 billion Paris fund debt, she also cleared the 18 billion debt that was supposed to be paid the upper year. She's now the WTO DG, and somebody's asking, what's the process? That is the process. Again, you go to the Empress of Sec, Arumote. I don't know if you remember the saga that happened at the parliament. Now, for the first time in an institution, someone was asking the right questions. And it took a woman to look at the transparency of that institution. All those women I've mentioned, are women who are told that tradition limits them, culture limits them. But I can tell you that it is an idea that the stereotypes have given to not just the women folks, but to those who love them, to redefine what should be a woman's role. Again, I want to say that one of the things that are also important is the family sector. See. My darling brothers, my uncles, I believe that even if you don't have a daughter, you have a sister. And if you don't have a sister, you have a mother. And if you don't have a mother, you might have a wife. You might have a girlfriend. You might even have neighbors who are female. The best advocate is the male advocates. The ones who begin to change the narratives are the ones who are in the family system. The fathers, 
our brothers. How do you redefine gender roles? What are you saying that is different from what others are saying? You know, you go to the school system and you look at the textbooks and you see Obi is a boy. Obi is playing ball. In the school textbook, and then Ada is a girl, or Jumobi is a girl, she is cooking. So the norms are already in the textbooks. So I'm already, I'm already seeing that, oh, I should be cooking and my brother should be playing ball. So it even starts from our curriculum, our school systems. And if you look at that picture, you see a man surrounded by his wives and his daughters. He is just the head, but these girls are the neck. And I can tell you that that is how it is in every system. And most importantly, for me myself, I was told that I couldn't run for elections. First, they said I was going to be the first female to defy all the odds. Who is this girl? You think you just come and dislodge all the men here? Oh, me as a, as a traditional ruler, you win elections and I'll now be standing up for you. It, that's very good. And not only that, I also had a conversation with even my family who were even afraid of changing the norm. But I said something, winning election is not just the winning, it's even daring to run. And daring to run means that other girls can also decide to dare the odds. And so I'm saying to you that one of the most important things is that women, Umwa Das, the girl child, the art of mastery has already been given to us from time immemorial. We have been frontliners before now. And without saying too much, I don't think anyone should tell you to take it by force. You've already taken it. And so it is time to reawaken that zeal. So I don't know if I'm talking to somebody in the hall, any young girl that is on the art of becoming, nothing, absolutely nothing, should decide for you or tell you that you cannot attain any height. Because the art of mastery for the female folks, right time from immemorial, was given to us not only in our culture, but in our system. So I am telling you because I dust in here because I know that I'm full of power. Because I know that as a woman, that is control. And until you reawaken it, you continue to think that the stereotype of being women, marginalization, is a thing that we need to fight. You can't fight for what you have. Thank you very much.